my dad was evil can evil that reckless handsome american daredevil the motorcycle jumper the guy that invented himself and crashed and got back up he was pretty special my dad jumped at wembley 40 years ago in 1975. he will be jumping over 13 buses here he goes and he will go Well, my dad was born Robert Craig Knievel in Butte, Montana in 1938. I mean, Butte was a rough, tough mining town. My mom and dad met in high school. And uh, let's see, I think my mom was 18. And my dad was always going to be a world beater. I mean, he always tells us a story. He went and saw the Joey Chitwood Auto Thrill Show. So he thought he could sort of duplicate that in a motorcycle show. And he became one of the most famous people in the world in six years. Well, the Caesars Palace jump was on New Year's Eve 1967. So I was seven years old then. I'm sure he drove by the hotel one day. And he said, now that'd make me famous, jumping over those fountains out in front of that hotel right there. So he really just bluffed his way into the owner's office. And the owner was kind of a guy like my dad. They were both gamblers and drinkers and womanizers, and they got along famously. So that's how my dad came to jump Caesar's Palace. Or crash at Caesar's Palace, I should say. We did go to quite a few of my dad's jumps when we were kids. I mean, we were just as enthralled and captivated as and nervous and yeah, we were on the edge of our seats as much as anyone else was. Of course, the ones we liked the best were the ones he made it. I mean, he jumped 175 times. And he crashed maybe 11 or 12 times. I think I've only seen him crash at one jump. Wow, can you imagine getting on a motorcycle and driving down and hurtling yourself off a ramp over 13 buses half the length of that field? Dad crashed at Wembley because I mean, he simply didn't have enough speed to clear the buses and he needed a longer runway to get up enough speed. I think he rebroke his pelvis and he had a concussion. He knocked himself silly, of course. But somehow he managed to ride himself and walk back up the ramp. Ladies and gentlemen of this wonderful country. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty typical of him not to be carted away without some sort of parting words to the crowd. My dad had expectations that his sons would follow him into his profession. I really wasn't that interested in it. When I look at this, I think there's no way in hell I could do it or even want to be able to do it. <laughs> it wasn't easy growing up with Evil Knievel as your father. He was so powerful and so overwhelming. He was hard on my mom and he was hard on us kids, not because he was being a jerk or anything, but he's just one hard charging man. And it takes a while to be able to go out and do things on your own before you can kind of step out of that strong of a parent shadow, I think. Ah, that probably took me until I was 30 years old to even begin that awareness. You know, my dad had been busted up so many times. Well, he retired because he couldn't hang on to the motorcycle anymore after it crashed. <laughs> you just can't do that forever. I mean, he broke his back five times. So he'd always been in a lot of pain. Then he contracted hepatitis C from all the blood transfusions he'd had. He had diabetes. I mean, the last 10 years of his life were, were just, I mean, he was in a lot of pain. My dad never, ever expressed any kind of regret for the way that he lived his life. I liked him a lot more as he got older, but not because he was anybody different, because I was different. I was really proud of him. Yeah.